Okay? But now what I want to do is I want to think about, can I understand this a little more easily rather than like working with this function that I don't know what it is, which is a bit awkward. I have no equations here. I'm just trying to piece it together, right? What I'm going to do is instead of drawing a displacement time graph, displacement and time, I'm going to draw a velocity and time graph. Velocity and time. The reason why is because I know what velocity is. So this will actually be very easy to graph. Okay, so draw yourself, maybe if you can, directly underneath, it will be actually easier for you, but I've run out of space. Directly underneath, draw yourself a new set of axes. And I'm going to mark out the same time coordinates, 1, 2, and 3. Here's still an x time axis, right? So this is still x. But what I've got over here is not displacement anymore, it's going to be velocity. Now, because velocity is a rate of change, it's how displacement is changing over time. That's why I can say it's f dash, right? Hey, you guys have seen this before, right? You've been able to graph f dash from f. Well, what would it look like in this case? What's happening for the first two hours? It's straight, right? But watch out, it's straight at what value? What is the velocity from time 0 to time 2? It's 60, right? So uh, I guess 60 is up there. I'll put 60 here. Is that OK? So for the first two hours, that velocity is just 60. Is that all right? I'll put a marker in here. I'll make this a hollow circle, because in a second, it's about to change, isn't it? They're going to speed up. So now it's going to be 100 kilometers per hour from the second hour to the end. Okay, so let's put, I don't know, something about that, roughly. You get the idea. There you go, forever. Okay, now, orange is the color I used. My question is, the way we solve this, this problem here of, of how far did the astronaut travel, what does it look like on this diagram? What does solving this question look like over here? We had to use like find out where you end, find out where you start, and then take the difference. Okay? But in this diagram, from time 1 to time 3, where is the number 160? Where is the answer to this? Where is it hiding? Okay? Hmm. Before we come to the, what you reckon, I, I will come to you, okay? I want you to think about how you inferred each part of this graph, right? How did you work it out? For example, why, did, why was the gradient changing? Why is that happening? Because the, the speed changes, right? And the speed is literally the gradient here, okay? And that's why over here you can see these values change because this graph is about the gradient, okay? So you can see on this graph it's a little clearer that these two legs of the journey the slow part and the fast part, can be considered as two separate pieces. Do you see that? If I draw a line down the middle, like that, okay? So there's like journey part one, journey part two. Yes? Eric, what were you going to suggest? What were you thinking? Add 100 to 60. Add 100 to 60. Just hold on a second. This is a very obvious calculation to do, but why, where is it on this diagram, okay? Well, there's the slow part of the journey, right? Grab your color there. I'll show you that in. See that spot there? Okay. Traveling at 60 kilometers per hour for how long? And the answer is for one hour, right? One hour times 60 kilometers per hour. Now, please note, had I asked you for a different spot, right? If I'd said, well, what about from one and a half hours to three hours, right? What would I have done here? Instead of going one times 60, what would I have done? I would have gone half an hour times, times 60, which of course would have been 30 kilometers, which is how far you travel at that speed in that time. Okay? So this is 1 times 60 because it's 1 hour times 60 kilometers per hour. You can even see what happens with the units. Do you see that? Do you see why we write per hour as divided by hour? Because the hours, they literally, they cancel, right? And that's what leaves you with 60 kilometers. Okay, what about over here? Well, I've got another part of the journey, but of course it's going faster, right? So how am I going to work out what this part is? It's one hour multiplied by 100 kilometers per hour. So it's one times 100. Same deal with the units, right? 
our kilometers per hour. Okay? So these two here represent two parts of the journey. You do one, you do the other, and then of course, because you do them one after the other, you add them. That gives you a total distance, which is, thankfully, 60 plus 100, which is 160. Okay? All right, now, what have we just done, right? Well, we've solved this problem here based on this graph, but it was a little bit weird because we didn't know what any of the, um, any of the actual equations were, right? But now I've converted it into a graph where I know it looks like a weirder graph because it's a bit, it's a step function, right? Um, it's a piecemeal function, but I can work out the values quite easily because they're all rectangles. They're easy to deal with, okay? So what we've done is we've turned like a, something like sort of a gradient problem into a, well, it's an area problem, isn't it? You see that? Like that's how you work out this distance here, and that's why you'd, do, if it was half the time, you'd make the rectangle half the size. Does that make sense? Now, before I formalize this and put some language around it, right, some notation, just imagine if it wasn't such a simple journey, right? If it wasn't 60 kilometers exactly for two hours. What if it was like, I don't know, 35 kilometers for two minutes? and then 71 kilometers for 45 seconds. And it just kept on changing, right? I could still do this, couldn't I? It would just be messier, but it would be the same thing, just like more calculations. Does that make sense? In principle, the idea is sound. Working out areas gives you a total change, 